Hey, and welcome to another episode of the SERS Group podcast. I'm JC. And I'm Barbara. Welcome. Today we are talking about haplotypes. So when we're talking about chronic inflammatory response syndrome, we are talking about people who have a genetic predisposition to being really bad at eliminating a biotoxin and they encounter that biotoxin. The haplotypes are the genetic part of that conversation. Right. And genetics aren't bad inherently. Like having this particular gene is not necessarily a terrible thing. Yeah. So there's like six main ones associated with SIRS and like anything, the genes are what decide your traits. So it could be anything from your your eye color to your inability to process toxins in your body. Um, but that's what we're talking about when we talk about genes. And can I just start with the really cool part? I want nothing more. Okay. So everyone is really like touchy about the haplotypes associated with SIRS. There's even one, it's the multi-susceptible, they call the dreaded haplotype um, because it's multi-susceptible, which means you're susceptible to any of the biotoxins. However, I went down this really interesting rabbit hole because the thing that bothers me about SIRS is like, how did we evolve to be like our bodies evolved to not be able to do this? And so I started looking into the different haplotypes and some of the haplotypes that are associated with SIRS are associated with benefits in other areas. And the most interesting thing I found was they did a study of people who died from Black Death and survived Black Death. And what they found was that a lot of people who had haplotypes associated with SIRS and autoimmune illnesses survived the Black Plague. So perhaps having SIRS is the price we are paying for our ancestors surviving like this mass horrific plague. It's pretty cool. And it makes sense because I feel like with every advantage comes a disadvantage and vice versa. I think that's like life's or the universe or God's way of like making things a little bit fair. Um, uh, <laughs> it's not karma, guys. Fair. It's just karma. It's but karma. at least, you know, at least a, a crappy thing and we've even talked about this in the in the scheme of not to get all like sentimental and emotional, but in this in the scheme of like going through chronic illness, it's like we we need to I feel like you almost have a duty once you heal from that illness to go and help others with that or or go help others through a similar trauma that you yourself have processed and walked through. Otherwise, why the heck did you go through all that pain? You know, yeah. like, like what, what other purpose would there have been for that? Um, so similarly, our ancestors survived something horrific that wiped out a crap ton of the population. And here we are. It just means that unfortunately we really can't handle mold and some other biotoxins for some reason. Yeah. So speaking of the biotoxins, as Barbara said, one of them is mold. I talked about the multi-susceptible. Another of the big ones is Lyme. And I think this is where the haplotypes are helpful, right? Because if you are someone who you think you have SIRS, you do the blood testing half, well, part of the blood testing is the genetic haplotypes. You only have to do that the one time, thankfully. And then the other part of the blood testing is those SIRS markers, looking for those innate inflammatory responses in your body. And if you are someone who you're like, I have no idea what I might've been exposed to, the haplotypes can be helpful because they can kind of direct where you might need to remove exposure. So for example, if you have the mold haplotypes, it makes sense to test your home for mold, right? If you have the Lyme haplotype, maybe it makes sense to book an appointment with a Lyme literate doctor. So it there it's just more information. And I think with the more information you have, especially with SIRS, the more informed decisions you can make. Right. And that said... The, the other aspect of that is the fact that a biotoxin is kind of a biotoxin is kind of a biotoxin. So at the end of the day, if you are somebody who has the Lyme haplotype or um, maybe one of the ones uh, that's more directed at like a vaccine, for example, um, but you're in a moldy home, well, you may feel really crappy and your body may still not be able to process those biotoxins properly because again you you're kind of set up that way so i think that's still um i guess that's another reason why the multi-susceptible gene is not maybe not as bad as we all think it is because like in a way anybody who is susceptible to SIRS is going to have 
um, reactions maybe to more than just the main thing. Although, of course, the main thing might be the worst thing for them. Absolutely. And we touched on this when we did our episode about biotoxins, about like people who have breast implant illness. Well, that that could be SIRS because the whole thing with SIRS is it's a biotoxin you're not able to eliminate from your body. And so if you have a foreign object in your body, you're, you're not able to eliminate it. So even if you don't have the haplotypes, if you have SIRS symptoms and you have the SIRS markers, maybe you are in exposure and it's so much exposure that your body is not able to process those biotoxins. So it's kind of like we're saying, it's it's information, but like all SIRS diagnostic information. It's just another piece of that puzzle. Right. And SIRS at its base level is just your body freaking out on itself with the innate immune system and being unable to hand off to the adaptive immune system. And whatever is causing that is kind of besides the point, other than the fact that obviously you want to get rid of it from around yourself so that your immune system can calm down. And then you can also start clearing what's already in your body out of it. So, yeah. Absolutely. And we were talking about this earlier, but I think it's funny that people call multi-susceptible the dreaded haplotype. It always makes me think of Princess Bride, the dread pirate Roberts. And I, it just makes me laugh every time. I don't see any of the haplotypes as worse than another. Um, and the, the other ones we haven't mentioned, perhaps we should mention them. So we, we talked about mold and Lyme and multi-susceptible and maybe avoiding vaccines. There's also like low MSH. So MSH, melanocyte stimulating hormone, is one of the hallmark. Like if that's low, it's one of the big SIRS blood markers. Um, and so low MSH, that one specifically has been associated with a lot of pain disorders. So people who are specifically experiencing a lot of pain through their uh, SIRS manifestation, it could be that they have the low MSH haplotype. Does it change your treatment? No. I, it, so it's information, right? It's information, but it's it's not necessarily going to change how you're treated. Um, and then the last one we didn't talk about was chronic fatigue syndrome. Mm -hmm. um, there's one that's specifically associated with that as well. Yep. And quite often uh, an illness that is misdiagnosed or or maybe you do have chronic fatigue, but like really the root cause, the thing to treat, right, is SIRS. I don't, I don't know from my understanding. And again, I have maybe a very little understanding of chronic fatigue, but it's really just about management of it from my understanding. Like there, nobody's nobody else out there is claiming to have a protocol that eradicates it. I'm sure uh, there is. I'm sure there's someone <laughs> out there. That's a good who point. <laughs> that's a good point. But there's, does it actually work? Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good point. Oh, uh, another thing that's really interesting about genes in general is they can be turned on and off. Um, so the last step of the Shoemaker protocol is the VIP spray, which turns off the genes that were errantly turned on by chronic inflammatory response syndrome. But there's also indication that your SIRS haplotypes can be turned on by traumatic events in your life. So it can be traumatic in terms of like your health. So it could be a situation where like you had meningitis as a child. It can also be turned on by like trauma, like uh, emotional or mental trauma and uh, physical trauma, like a concussion as well. So it's, it's, I think it's interesting. <laughs> um, and I think if I were a parent, I would want to know this piece because I could test my kids, right? Like if I knew that I had SIRS, I could test my kids and give them that information so that they could live their lives more informed than I did. They could know that water damage buildings might be a problem for them. They could know to avoid fields with tall grass and maybe they would want to avoid situations in which they may be exposed to ticks. I really think that 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 is the true power of the genetic haplotypes is like the information you can pass along. Right. Yeah. I, I, I think that might be the most important part is protecting. And I know this is something that a lot of our group members struggle with too, is they know their family members are suffering because it is genetic and they know they, they re they're recognizing the symptoms in other people and their family and people are so resistant to it still. It it seems weird or crazy. You know, their conventional doctor isn't telling them about it. Therefore, it's not real. And it's heartbreaking. Um, but when you know, when you know your genetics, that's your first step 
towards moving towards healing. And the best thing that I think any of us can do is just being that example, go through the protocol, heal yourself, focus on yourself because you need to, to heal and to take care of yourself properly. And hopefully through your own transformation and feeling better, you will be that light to show the rest of your family that there is a a way out of the constant pain and whatever other symptoms they're suffering with. Absolutely. And I think on that note, we can't end it any more beautifully than that. Thank you so much for joining us on this conversation about haplotypes. Like, share, comment, rate, subscribe, do all the things. We'll leave lots of show notes down below for you with additional resources. And if you're looking for a community of support, you can join us over at thesourcegroup.com. See you there.